Hello, in this video I'm going to think um, a little bit about cubic functions of the form y equals x cubed. Um, there are a few little uh, tips, I suppose, that um, uh, help me at least when it comes to being able to interpret and sketch graphs um, of this form very, very quickly. Um, and, and, and really, I suppose the first thing is to, is to note that um, the, the general form of the graph, y equals x cubed, is going to look something like this. It's going to come up across the, through the origin, and it's going to rise again very steeply. And, and do note that the, 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 uh, the values for y here, like the, it's going to rise very, very steeply, um, almost like an exponential curve. Um, and one can experiment as to why, um, why the function y equals x cubed takes this general form by just creating a very basic table of values. We can say that this is x, this is y equals x cubed. And we can just make some columns here. It doesn't have to be so neat, really. Uh, and we just take relative values. It doesn't have to be... We don't have to take a broad range of values. Just say negative 2, negative 1. Uh, at the origin, at 0, we've got 1 and we've got 2. This will give a, a clear enough sense as to what's going on. And so what, uh, negative 2, if we substitute this value for x into this equation, well, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. We've got naught, right? It is 0 cubed. That's just 0. 1 cubed is 1, and 2 cubed is 8. And so you would see that uh, for this function, we'd have at the point 1 and 1, it would cross, and then likewise at the point 2 and 8, and on and on. Um, and um, actually, we could even plug that into um, this bit of graphing software here. Um, if um, we just reset it, I was just playing around with it. Um, this is actually the first time I've used this. Um, but if we just plug in, say, y equals x cubed, enter, and we graph. And you can see here, this is actually zoomed in quite a lot. But if we zoom out, you can see that that's indeed the general form that this function takes. Um, and there are a couple points of nuance, I suppose, that are, are um, worth highlighting here. Um, firstly, as I mentioned at the outset, it's important to, to note that, the, that this curve um, passes the axes only at one point, which is right at the origin. Uh, and notice also, too, as I said um, at the outset, <coughs> that as x increases, in positive values, so along the positive x-axis, y increases um, very, very rapidly. And it is indeed almost like an exponential curve. It's incredible rapid growth um, or increase. Uh, and finally, also, that at the origin in which this gra uh, uh, graph, uh, 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 graph crosses through, um, that actually at this point, if you were to zoom in, it would be flat. And actually, we can do that using this graphing software, if we were to zoom back in, you'd see that indeed it does flatten out at the origin, um, which is quite curious. We call this a point of inflection, and the reason for that we'll, we'll see, um, as well as you can see here really, is that it's a point of inflection that um, the gradient is positive just before the origin, where x equals 0, y equals 0, right? It's positive, and then it flattens out, and then it becomes positive again. Um, and also, the last thing to notice um, and to remember, and this is probably the second key point to remember, firstly, that the general shape of, uh, of, of the graph of the function y equals x cubed takes this form. Uh, and secondly, that um, uh, the thing t the another important thing to notice is that the shape of this curve is the same as, as, as the curve with the equation y equals x plus 1 cubed. And in fact, if one were to graph this, you would notice that it takes exact same shape, except that um, y equals x cubed, it's just being shifted over to the left by 1. And one just has to essentially recall um, just basic graph transformations at this point, right? That if we were to sketch this, um, we would have our root at x is negative 1. And the graph would come up just like this, just as it would. Uh, and it would cross at x equals 1, and it would come up, and it would cross um, at y equals, if we set x to equal 0, y would equal 1. So it would come up and cross at 1. So it would look something like that, right? So it, 
all we're doing is essentially taking y equals x cubed and shifting it over one to the left. And so those are the two things, really, the two key things that one has to remember. Um, because now we can essentially look at, uh, we will essentially, one would be able to uh, sketch and interpret graphs of cubic functions of this form very, very quickly and quite easily. So let's consider an example. And this uh, first example, I think, is quite a common, uh, common one that people are introduced to when they're first introduced to cubic graphs of this form is uh, y equals negative x cubed. And the key thing here to remember is that all this, all this, all that's happening here is that we're going to have a reflection. So if we sketch in the, the, at the outset, let's just think about it uh, relative to y equals x cubed. All right, so we sketch this here like this. This is y equals x cubed. It's not the greatest sketch, but it will do. Y equals x cubed, right? Looks something like that. Um, we don't even need to plot any points here to, to graph this because we just know that it's a reflection. And so what that means, and I'll draw it in another color, is that this graph is going to look like this. It's just a reflection. It, it, it is, uh, it, 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 the, the thing to realize, I suppose, is that it's a reflection in the x-axis of the curve y equals x cubed. That's probably the most concise statement to make here. Um, and so it's, gonna, it's still going to flatten out at the origin, it's crossing at the origin, and everything else has just been reflected. Um, so let's consider another example. Say we are given something, say we are given uh, y equals x, x minus 2 cubed. Right, so again, let's just think about this relative to the curve y equals x cubed. Well, we know y equals x cubed looks something like this. Again, it's not the greatest sketch, but that will do. So y equals x cubed. And now um, we can start thinking about uh, uh, this curve, y equals x minus 2 cubed. And first thing to realize here is that we're being sh that, that, that the curve y equals x cubed is just being shifted to the right by 2. Um, and so one can already predict that we're going to have uh, a root at 2, right? That's where we're going to cross the x-axis. And indeed, if you were to set y to equal 0, and you were to solve for x, and you'd have x minus 2 cubed, you would end up with x equals 2. Okay, so that's, we know that's where our, our x-intercept, our y-intercept, um, you could just set x to equal 0, and so you'd have y equals 0 minus 2 cubed, which will give you negative 8. So, um, this isn't going to be directly to scale, but nevertheless it will just serve the point that this is negative 8. So the graph is just, it's just uh, y equals x cubed shifted to the right by 2. And so if I draw it, and I'll maybe do it in a different color, it will look like this. It's going to come down, it's going to cross at 2, and it's going to keep coming down, and it's going to cross at 8, and just look something like that. Now, my sketch isn't the greatest, actually, if we pull this up on the using this graphing software, that might help get an uh, even better sense. So, yeah, if we, which I don't need to clear that, we just keep y equals x cubed, so we can get a relative sense of it. Uh, and we write here y equals x minus 2 raised to the power of 3. Enter, and we're going to graph it. And indeed, you'll see here, if we zoom out, that's, zoom in, that, that's exactly what's happening. Okay, we've, that's our x-intercept at 2, it's coming up, and it's just, it's just the same as y equals x cubed shifted to the right, and it's going to come down, and it's going to cross at 8, and it's just going to run down like this. Um, at negative 8, I should say, is a y-intercept. Right, so let's um, do one more. Let's consider something different still. Let's think say we are given y equals negative times x. I was going to say uh, plus one half, but let's just keep it simple for the sake of this video. Um, yeah, so y equals the function y equals, and then this is just a negative one, you can think of it that way, right? It's just implicit times x plus 2 cubed. So let's firstly think about this 
this this function, the graph of this function, in relation to y equals x cubed. So I'll just sketch it. It's going to look something like that, right? Y equals x cubed. And now here, well, firstly, we have a negative symbol out front. That tells us immediately that we've got a reflection, okay? And also, in addition to that, we can see that this graph is being shifted to the left by 2. So we know that if we were to solve for x, so say, let's set y to equal 0, we would find that, um, that uh, we have uh, uh, a root at x is negative 2. So I'm just going to plot that here, x is negative 2. And um, when, uh, when x is 0, we are going to have uh, a y-intercept at negative 8 again. And so this graph is going to look something like this. It's going to uh, I'll try my best to sketch this. And it's going to come down like this. It's going to cross here like this. It's going to come down and it's going to cross here. And actually, that's better than my last sketch. It's going to look something like that. Um, and of course, that's y equals negative uh, times x plus 2 cubed. And just for the sake of it, we can just plug these values into the software. Whoops, okay, so we've got our y equals x cubed, and then we can write y equals negative times x plus 2 cubed. Enter graph, and we're going to see um, I don't know why it zooms in so close uh, and default. I might have to play around with the settings, but you could see here if I zoom out that we indeed have the, the graph that was sketched. Although my sketch is, whoops, my sketch is admittedly far more rough, but you can see here that it does look very similar. And we are going to indeed have our root at x equals negative 2, and our y-intercept is going to be negative 8. And you can see again, the key point, I suppose, is that it's a reflection, isn't it? And then shifted as well.